interesting how there's some that have blossomed out and some that are still in the bud. Butterfly milkweed. What a blessing to go on Sabbath and explore and see God's creation. See that burl on that oak tree there? Mm -hmm. I remember seeing that like 20 years ago when we first started hiking here. Actually, 24 years ago. It's only gotten bigger. What exactly is it? It's like a growth. Um, I don't know for sure what causes it. So it's a part of the tree. Mm -hmm. Interesting. This is a sugar maple. There's quite a few sugar maples. How do you know the difference between a maple and a sugar maple? A sugar maple, the bark is different and the leaves are slightly different. Really? This is a red bud. It has heart-shaped leaves. Hmm. I didn't know that. And it's edible. And we'll make a little bean later in the season that you can eat. I'm not sure why it's called red bud because they're quite a bit more pink than red. Mm -hmm. If you come in, come here and uh, like second week of April, there's a lot of them that are better than that. Here's some of the beans here. They're not filled out yet, but they hang from, from the red bud and there are seeds for the tree, but you can eat them later in the season. You can also eat the young growth for the leaves. This is an edible green called Gowan Saga. And uh, has like a minty smell to it. Very fragrant. This is a uh, locust. Uh, it'll have a beautiful flower in the spring. It's edible. It's 
what they call the black locust. And uh, it makes a really good durable fence post that will last for years and years. This is uh, red elm or slippery elm. Mm. And it has really tough bark. And you can uh, strip off the bark and braid it or twist it to make uh, a really durable so if you were in a wilderness survival situation and you needed to tie something this would be a valuable plant to know So it's the bark. Okay. Are you twisting it or braiding it? Twisting it. But it's being twisted against itself. Jim Bowler taught us this. I don't remember. It's been a while. The cicadas are singing to us. We should have Jim Buller come out. <laughs> yeah, he's a good teacher. It's getting a little bit thin. Do you remember what tree it was that we had hooked it over the bunk beds? That and was they, hickory. So I wonder if that would make good cordage. Yes, hickory bark does. Yeah. Yep. I wonder how that compares to this. Mm. Go and give yourself a burn. <laughs> yeah. Rope burn. I'm not able 
to break it. These rocks feel so good on my feet. Because of the massage factor or the coolness factor? Both. <laughs> it's cooler and then it feels like a massage on my feet. Were you with the Wraithleys when they shot a rattlesnake on, I think it was this trail? No, I wasn't. I remember the girls telling me about that. I heard about it. What did they do with it? I have no idea. <laughs> I didn't get that part of the story. What are you supposed to do with it? Bury it? Um, I understand you're supposed to let them live. Rattlesnakes? Yeah. Really? For what purpose? Just for like rodent control? Yeah. Keep the balance in the ecosystem. This is mowing. Nature's toilet paper. Seriously, you should plant some of this by the outhouse. <laughs> you can dry it and make a tea with it. Okay. It's good for your lungs. Oh. Wait. There's a spider hanging. I think that's here. the same one that was on me. <laughs> he just. Uh, <laughs> he keeps dropping. Now he's on the he's repelling from me. You see him now? Yep, right there. My little friend. He catches flies. Oh, there's a beautiful web right there. Oh, mm. Reflecting in the sunlight. I think the curlings drove all the way up here with the They did. The burden. Yes, they did. That was pretty brave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially over these rocks. This is Queen Anne's lace. It's edible. We ate some in our salad today. Okay, and it's got that flower, that darker flower in the middle. Mm -hmm. Can't really see it. has an interesting flavor. Yes. It's not mild. It's like you can definitely pick it out of the salad.
It's like you come into a whole new world here. <laughs> Definitely warmer here in the sun. It'll be cooler when they come up here to this corner by the cave. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. I'm glad that we could hike up here. It's a hot Sabbath, but it's a little bit cooler here. We're shaded by a big rock. This shelter that we have reminds me of a, a song, number 585. The Lord's our rock. The Lord's our rock, in Him we hide, a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever may be tied, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock in a weary land, cooling shade on the burning sand. Faithful guide for the pilgrim band, a shelter in the time of storm. A shade by day, defense by night, a shelter in the time of storm. No fears alarm, no foes affright, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock in a weary land, cooling shade on the burning sand, faithful guide for the pilgrim band, a shelter in the time of storm. 
The raging floods may round us beat, a shelter in the time of storm. We find in God a safe retreat, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock in a weary land, cooling shade on the burning sand, faithful guide for the pilgrim band, a shelter in the time of storm. O rock divine, O refuge dear, a shelter in the time of storm. Be thou our helper ever near, a shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock in a weary land, cooling shade on the burning sand, faithful guide for the pilgrim band, a shelter in the time of storm. A shelter in the time of storm. We were just out in the hot, dry, almost like a desert area back there where the sun was just beating down. And then we come here and we're sheltered by a big rock. And it's cooler, much more comfortable. So many people are in this world without a shelter. They don't know that they can come to Jesus and find a shelter in Him. So those of us who have found this shelter in Jesus, let's invite our friends, our family, or those who do not know our Savior, come. Come out of the storm. Come out of the burning heat. Come to the shelter. Jesus Christ. There is room under the shelter of this rock for all who want to get out of the storm. Let's turn the page to number 586. O oh, safe to the rock. O oh, safe to the rock that is higher than I. My soul in its conflicts and sorrows would fly. So sinful, so weary, thine, thine would I be. Thou blessed rock of ages, I'm hiding in Thee, hiding in Thee, hiding in Thee. Thou blessed rock of ages, I'm hiding in Thee. In the calm of the noontide, in sorrow's lone hour, in times when temptation casts o'er me its power, in the tempests of life on its wide heaving sea, Thou blessed rock of ages, I'm hiding in Thee, hiding in Thee, hiding in Thee. Thou blessed rock of ages, I'm hiding in Thee. How oft in the conflict, when pressed by the foe, I have fled to my refuge and breathed out my woe. How often when trials like 
sea billows roll. Have I hidden in thee, O thou rock of my soul? Hiding in thee, hiding in thee, thou blessed rock of ages, I'm hiding in thee. Have you felt pressed down by the foe, by the tempter, by our enemy Satan? When we feel pressed down by Him, we can call out on Jesus' name. And we'll find that He pushes the enemy back. When the storm is coming down on our heads, it's cold, it's rainy, we can hide in the rock of Jesus Christ. We can get away from the storm into His presence. Any favorites? Number 258. Oh, yes. We do need Him every hour. I need Thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like Thine can peace afford. I need Thee, oh, I need Thee. Every hour I need Thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to Thee. I need Thee every hour, stay Thou nearby. Temptations lose their power when Thou art nigh. I need Thee, oh, I need Thee, every hour I need Thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to Thee. I need Thee every hour, enjoy Your pain, come quickly and abide, or life is vain. I need Thee, oh, I need Thee, every hour I need Thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to Thee. I need Thee every hour, Teach me thy will, and thy rich promises in me fulfill. I need thee, oh, I need thee, every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to Thee. I need Thee every hour, Most Holy One. O make me Thine indeed, Thou blessed Son. I need Thee, O I need Thee, Every hour I need Thee, Oh, bless me now, my Savior, I come to Thee. We need Him every hour. 
every minute. Without Him, we get irritated. We speak things that we regret. We do things that we regret. But if every hour, every minute, we say, I need you, please, Jesus, be with me. Help me in this situation. Give me your spirit. Then no matter what comes, and we stay within our Heavenly Father's will, and we live with no regrets. Any other favorites? Number 279. Live out thy life within me, O Jesus, King of kings. Be thou thyself the answer to all my questionings. Live out thy life within me, and all things have thy way. I, the transparent medium, thy glory to display. The temple has been yielded and purified of sin. Let thy Shekinah glory now shine forth from within, and all the earth keep silence, the body henceforth be. Thy silent, gentle servant, moved only as by thee. Its members every moment held subject to thy call, ready to have thee use them or not be used at all. Held without restless longing, or strain, or stress, or fret, or chafings at thy dealings, or thoughts of vain regret. But restful, calm, and pliant, from bend and bias free, Awaiting thy decision when thou hast need of me. Live out thy life within me, O Jesus, King of kings. Be thou thyself the answer to all my questionings. If we will die to our own ambitions, our own plans, our own desires, then His life, His will can be lived out in our life. May it be so every day of our life. Who has something they would like to thank their Heavenly Father for? Uh, my birthday is on Monday. Oh. So it's a good reminder that the Lord has given me another year. Amen. Uh, I didn't deserve it, but He blessed me with it. And I'm praying that He blesses me with many more years to come. Amen. Amen. How old will you be? 24. 24. We should sing happy birthday. 
A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. The best that you ever knew. Lord, keep him shining for you. Lord, keep him shining for you. Keep him pure, keep him bright, keep him pure, keep him bright. Lord, keep him shining for you, Lord, keep him shining for you. I forget the rest of it. I wrote the words down for it, and I haven't memorized them yet. I have to go find the words and uh, then sing it to you this when you get back. Okay. <laughs> yes. What prayer requests do we have to bring before the throne of grace? All of our YouTube prayer requests that we get. Yes, yes. So many people in the comment section are asking for prayer. We can lift those up. Any prayer requests you all have? Pray for my brother. He's looking for a new job because the one he's at is quite miserable. Okay. So pray for him on that. Okay. What's your brother's name? Vincent. I'm also looking for a job, so <laughs> okay. I've applied to a few places, but I'm, okay. you know, I'm putting it my faith in the Lord, and I trust that He'll He'll find the right one for me. So Amen. No rush. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. He He has a job for you, yes. and He has people there at that job that you can witness to mm -hmm. that maybe no one else can reach. So he definitely has a specific place for you to work a specific time. Anything else? I'm thankful that we had Paul visit. Yes. Big help. Yes. I'm grateful too. Yes, Paul was a big help. Definitely. Okay. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Sabbath. A day to rest, a day to spend with you. We wanted to say thank you for sending Paul to us. What a help he's been. Thank you that you are the rock in this hot, dry land that you shelter us from the storm and from the heat. We wanted to say thank you for the flowers that you gave us on our journey up here. You've given us clothes to wear and food to eat, but most of all, you sent your only Son so that the sins of our past could be forgiven and that we could be given power to be your sons and your daughters, to walk in obedience to you. We're asking for Samantha's brother, Vincent, that you would provide another job for him that would be more suitable. And Father, open Vincent's eyes that he would see that you are real, that you do exist, that you have a plan and a purpose for him and for each one of us. We ask for our brother, Michael, that you will provide him with the job that he needs. Thank you that you will provide for all our needs according to your riches in glory by your Son, Jesus. Thank you for providing for every one of our needs. We ask now as we speak what you have done for us and as we open our mouth, we ask that you would speak through us, speak to us and give us the ability to express it. And as we open your word, please send your Holy Spirit. We're asking in the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Oh, there was one experience that I wanted to thank the Lord for. So we were clearing land for the house of prayer, and Dave Brummel was helping, and he said that the chainsaw was dull and it wasn't quite cutting right. And then he accidentally hit the pavement with it 
and all of a sudden it started cutting better and it was cutting sharp like it was sharp again and that's definitely a miracle because normally whenever you hit the pavement or the asphalt with a chainsaw if it's dull when you hit the pavement it's even more dull <laughs> like just barely touching the pavement or a rock and it's just mm, dull I'd like to thank the Lord for all the different miracles uh, that He has done just one after the other. Very amazing. During this time, I thought that we could maybe each share maybe our favorite Bible passage or Bible verse and we could share just give you opportunity to to read it and share it and just to explain why this particular passage has been super meaningful for you. I think for me, my favorite passage would be Psalm 130. Out of the depths have I cried unto Thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let Thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. Verse 5. I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait, and in His word do I hope. My soul waiteth for the Lord. Verse 3. If thou, O Lord, shouldst mark iniquities, O Lord, who should stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. Let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities, from all his iniquities, and he shall redeem Israel. From all his iniquities, from all his iniquities, Psalms 131 through 8. This is meaningful for me because when I look at my past, I look at so much sin that I'm ashamed of. And down in that pit of discouragement and depression and guilt and shame, verse 1, out of the depths have I cried unto thee. And when I was down in my lowest point, when I called out, and said, Jesus, forgive me. Give me a new start. Give me another chance. He pulled me up out of that pit. I'm no longer in that darkness. I'm no longer in that depression. I'm no longer in that despair. He has redeemed me. He has forgiven me. Verse 4 says, But there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. 
So you may be down in a deep pit because of the sins that you've committed or the sins that people have committed against you. You're down in this pit. But it doesn't end there. There is forgiveness with the Lord. Because of Him, there is hope. Verse 7 says, With the Lord there is mercy, and with Him there is plenteous redemption. The Lord's redemption does not run out. He doesn't have a supply that eventually will be used up. His redemption is plenteous. There is enough redemption for each and every person that calls out for His help. For each and every person that calls out for His forgiveness and asks for it, it is there. Also, 1 John 1 verse 9 is one of my very favorites. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. There's nothing that He can't forgive you for. You come to Him asking for forgiveness. He forgives you. Not only is there forgiveness, but there's cleansing. He doesn't just forgive you and then leave you in the dirtiness of your sin. He forgives you and then through His power He cleans you up. So then you can walk in a clean path. You can walk with clean hands, a pure heart, a pure mind. You can walk in the cleanness. You can try to clean yourself up, but there's just not enough water. You just can't scrub yourself enough to get clean. But when you come to Him, there's this fountain of water. You go in that fountain dirty and you come out clean. You go into that fountain miserable and sick and you come out invigorated and healed. And if you have not experienced this forgiveness, this cleansing, this cleanness that Jesus, Yeshua can give you, then I invite you to call out on Him like I did and experience this forgiveness, this cleanness, this peace. You'll never find it in the New Age philosophy. You'll never find it in anything that the world has to offer. You will only find it in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am come to seek and to save that which was lost. When we get into sin, we find ourselves in a maze. We find ourselves in the middle of a briar patch. And we just keep on getting tangled. We try to get out of it, but we get tangled. We try to get out of it, we get tangled. We try to get out of it, but we get confused. We're not sure the way out. And Jesus says, My son, my daughter, take my hand. I'll lead you out of this maze. I'll carry you so these thorns don't pull you back. And He brings you out of that place. And He brings you into a place of green pasture with clear running water where you can drink. He binds up your wounds. He brings healing to you. And then you can be one of His contented, obedient sheep in His pasture. And once you've been brought into the safety of His fold, don't be pushing the fence. Don't be looking to try to climb over the fence or under it. The fence is the boundary of His law. It's there for your good. And there's times where the grass may look greener on the other side of the fence. 
But outside the fence, there's dogs that can come and tear you up or that can chase you far off from the safety of the fold. Outside of the fence, there's traffic, trucks, vehicles that can hit you and smash you and break your bones. Stay within the boundaries of this fence, the law of God, which was given for your good. All the times that I've gone outside of the fence and chosen sin, I regret that. I'm ashamed of that. And in God's mercy, the Good Shepherd has said, Titus, I see that you're broken. I see that you're suffering from your choice to push through the fence. Come back into the safety inside the fence. And now, I'm safe inside the fence. And I'm learning to be contented inside the fence. The grass may look greener on the other side. It may seem more exciting out there. But I've seen that in the end, it's only miserable out there. And I only want to stay inside the fence with the Good Shepherd. He treats me so well. He's been so merciful to me. All the times that I've wandered, He's brought me back. Have you wandered away from the Good Shepherd? Are you willing to let Him carry you back into the place of safety? Don't struggle. Don't run away. If you're too weak or you don't know the way back, Jesus will lead you back where you need to be. Right, I'd like to hear from you all and you can tell me your favorite Bible verses and why they're meaningful to you. All right. So I picked Psalm 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I picked this verse because it's the first verse that I ever memorized when I was really young, probably around five or six. Oh, wow. And it's just always stuck with me. And every time I, I repeat it in my head or I think about it, it reminds me that the Bible gives us clarity, you know, yeah. and it's it's almost it's like an instruction book for life. That's right. But if you're if you're in the dark, if you are confused about a situation or you don't know what's going on, you turn to the word and it'll set you straight and you mm. it gives you great understanding amen <laughs> yes yes his word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path if we had to walk through here in the pitch black would we stumble on these stones yes we would Without the light of God's Word, we are sure to stumble and fall and get wounded and broken and bruised. But if we will keep this light with us at all times, we don't have to fall. We don't have to fall in sin and get all broken up, get all scarred up. We can be spared of that fall by taking heed, by giving attention to the instructions and the warnings of this word. Thank you, Brother Michael. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I never thought about what, what is my favorite verse, but I picked this one. Um, it's from Matthew. It's from the Sermon on the Mount. It says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Mm -hmm. And I especially like that because notice how he doesn't say peacekeeper. He says peacemaker, mm -hmm. which... You know, a peacekeeper is someone who stays quiet to keep things, you know, peaceful. But a peacemaker sometimes has to disrupt in order to bring about peace, mm. which is something I've had to deal with. But, um, you know, Jesus didn't come to just keep peace. He came to cause a disturbance, mm. to wake people up, to give them peace. Mm. Amen. And, Amen. yeah, wow. I really like that one. And that's a good distinction between a peacekeeper and a peacemaker mm -hmm. because to keep the peace sometimes people will compromise the truth mm -hmm. or 
like, oh, I'm not going to tell my classmates that I'm a Christian or that I follow Jesus because they won't like that. I'll just keep the peace. Or mm -hmm. I won't tell my family that I have decided to follow Jesus all the way in baptism. just want to keep the peace. Or, oh, I'm not going to uh, stay with a healthy diet when I'm around family because, well, they, their feelings would get offended if I don't eat out barbecue with them or uh, I'm not going to dress differently than the world because uh, my family are going to have a bellyache about it. They won't accept the changes that I want to make. Um, so sometimes we could, by trying to keep the peace, we could not follow our convictions that are based on God's principles. So it's not always a good thing to keep the peace. But to be a peacemaker, like you said, sometimes we have to stand up mm -hmm. or speak out to make peace. And if we have two people that are angry at each other, sometimes it can be uncomfortable to try to go between mm -hmm. and help bring reconciliation. But Jesus is the greatest peacemaker. Mm -hmm. Because all of us, through our sin, have become separated from God the Father. We have become alienated from Him because of our choice to rebel and sin. And so Jesus is the greatest peacemaker because He bridged the gulf between God and man. And He has brought us back into reconciliation with the Father. And so one day, the Father will say, Son, go get our children. Go bring them. Go get them. And so Jesus will come with all his angels and a great trumpet and he'll take his children home and he'll bring us back and he'll say I brought them back Father. Here they are. <laughs> wow. Because Jesus was willing to be a peacemaker in order to make peace between God and man, the law states clearly that if you sin, the penalty is death. The only way that the law could be fulfilled, the penalty could be paid, was by Jesus dying that death on the cross to pay the penalty. And because of that, now we're no longer running from the law we are forgiven he made peace the, the law is the claims of the law are satisfied the law was not done away with the law was not just ignored the penalty of the law was still paid but yet we have peace with our father through the person of Jesus Christ he chose to be the peacemaker. And so because of Jesus making peace, now we have the opportunity. There's people that we know, friends, family, strangers. They're far from their heavenly Father. They're alienated from Him. And He has committed to us the word of reconciliation. And we can tell people that through Jesus, you can come back to your Father's house. Through Jesus, you can be accepted by your Heavenly Father. Through Jesus, you can be restored what you lost through sin. Wow. As Christians, we have everything to look forward to. I also wanted to mention that sometimes reconciliation is not possible with those who are not surrendered to the Lord. So if two people are willing to be surrendered to the Lord, then they can find common ground.
but it's often impossible to find common ground with those that are not surrendered to the Lord. So, throughout all the trials that I've gone through, my favorite verse has been Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. And then the other one is, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And so, when I'm going through trials and... I feel like I can't bear them. These two verses have given me encouragement to have faith and trust the Lord and know that He can help me and that I will get through it. Amen. Amen. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. To give you a future and a hope. And then the reference to the other scripture that Stephanie mentioned it's in Philippians Um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Sometimes we feel overwhelmed and we feel like we can't do all that needs to be done. But through the strength that Christ gives us, as He strengthens us, we can do all all the things that need to be done. We can do His will through the strength that He gives us. Any other thoughts before we close? Okay. Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that we can do all things through your Son, Jesus, who strengthens us. In this new week, please guide us. Give us the strength that we need. Give us the direction that we need. Fill us up with your Holy Spirit that we would be full to overflowing. That this Spirit that you give us would flow to others, to our friends, our neighbors, our family, though all those that we're in contact with. Open up our mouth that we could speak, that we could repeat what you have done for us. That our lives would be filled with your joy that would just bubble over. Thank you, Father. Keep changing and molding us and shaping us that we could be all that you want us to be. Thank you. We ask that you would bless those of us that are here and those that are watching later and bring us all together in your kingdom soon. We look forward to that day when we can all be with you. Thank you, and we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua. Amen.
the week the best emblem of eternal rest. <laughs> yes. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Shall we go on a walk today? A walk today, a walk today. Shall we go on a walk today? And see what God has made. I will sing of Jesus' love. Sing of Him who first loved me. For He left bright worlds above. And he died on Calvary. I will sing of Jesus' love, endless praise. My heart shall give. He has died that I might live. 
I will sing his love to me. Nothing good for him I've done. How could he such love be so? Lord, I owe my heart is one. Help me now thy love to show. I will sing of Jesus' love, endless praise. My heart shall give. He has died that I might live. I will sing his love to me. Getting the hymnal out while walking. Multitasking. lost my notebook. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God is good. No twisted ankles. No bruises. I wonder if it would be easier without these shoes on. Oh, um, yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if I'm slipping in the gravel because of that. I don't know. I'm pretty secure in my bare feet. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love at the in of thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift 
and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my healing. Always only for my healing. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a might would I withhold, not a might would I withhold. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own, it shall be thy royal throne, it shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever 